This video will demonstrate how to set up Jack Router, the Jack Audio Connection Kit for Windows. I have a 64-bit Windows 7 here, so I'll show you one additional thing you need to do if you also have a Windows 7 64-bit. You have to manually register a DLL. Otherwise, the install process will do everything else. Right in front of us here, we have the Jack Audio already running. Jack uses port audio, which is how you activate it. I also have two connection bays, which is where the ASIO aware applications that you have will show up. Inside here, you're able to wire these however you like to take them to other inputs. Like from Mix, I can take this input over to this application. And my output is the sound card where I have the headphones listening. So, I have also Jack Audio has its own connection kit bay, but I prefer the ones from KX Studio. But I'll show you how to get all of these and you can make your own decision. Over on this side, we have Carla, where I have my MIDI keyboard hooked up to Carla's system. I also have Carla comes with its own plugins, and I have a synthesizer. hooked up into it. This automatically, whatever you, whatever a VST plugin you use, whether it's a VST instrument or an effect, will tandemly connect to each other inside here and you don't have to worry about fiddling with the wires. They'll all be coming into the output. So this plugin will go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So if I wanted to add an EQ, I could choose that, choose this one choose an equalizer. I'll play a note here. Let me turn this down just a little bit on my headphones. And as you can see, you can play EQ however you like. There's multiple channels here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So there's lots of op options here. You can only have one VST instrument, I think. So you have to, there has, you'll have to find another way if you want to use more than one VST instrument in Carla. In Carla, in the configure, in the engine part, I am using the ASIO system. You can also use several other systems in it and mess around with that. And this is still kind of a, a growing application, and the developers constantly making improvements on it. But right now, it's it's working so well that I, I actually prefer it than. Jack's own system here. So the keyboard connects to Carla. Everything, any plugins that you add also connects to Carla, our VST instruments. And then what that all mixes in here, and then in the output goes to this, which connects over to this input. And this is the actual Jack audio connection bay here. We and you have an ASIO aware application and you choose Jack Router as the ASIO sound card, it'll show up in here just like I, it's doing for mix. So in the options for mix and preferences, I have an ASIO sound card system versus the other ones, but I instead of choosing the Behringer, which is my ASIO sound card, I choose Jack Router instead and then that way hit apply OK. And then that way it shows up in this connection bay where I can use it and wire it however I however you want. So sometimes you only want certain applications to go to other applications instead of everything. But this is makes it very versatile to have a wiring bay like this. And back this up a little bit. So that's just one example of an ASIO Aware app. So how do you get Jack Audio going here? So let's let's go there first and show you how to get this set up. The website is here, so scroll down. And whether you have 32 bits or 64 bits, make that choice and go ahead and download it. Once you've downloaded it, uh, you're done if it's 32 bits. If you've downloaded the Windows 7 64 bits, you have one more thing to do. 
for the install to be complete. So you need to go to the Start menu and then type in the search CMD. Right click on CMD as it comes up. Run as administrator. You have to manually run as administrator. You have to manually register that DLL for the Jack router in the 64 bits folder. So you have to migrate to that folder first. So CD backslash CD program files x86 CD jack and then CD 64 bits. Now we're in the folder. Then all you have to do is type in reg svr32 space jack router dot dll and there we have it. So now you have completed the 64-bit Windows install of Jack Audio Connection Kit. Now in order to make it easier to use Jack Audio, we're going to put a couple of shortcuts from Jack onto the desktop. Start with Jack Port Audio, right click, send to desktop. Then go over to right click on the Jack Control and send that to the desktop too. When you've done that, there's another site I'll have you go to to study, and we need to add a little bit to the target script in order to tell Port Audio which ASIO sound card to use. This example here is showing ASIO for All, which is a universal ASIO wraparound driver that you can use your own native sound card. If you don't have an ASIO sound card, you can choose your native sound card, say, for this laptop here, I have a Realtek HD audio, so I could choose that sound card instead of my Behringer. But I'm going to go over what it, how to do this for a real ASIO sound card. It's fairly easy to follow these instructions otherwise. So we'll go to the port audio icon that shows up if you've sent it to the desktop. Slide in here to this target area. We'll go all the way to the left. And you can see scroll to the right and then it'll usually stop right here right after that dash D port audio now you need to put in the rest of it the dash D quotation mark capital letters ASIO double colon and then the name of your ASIO sound card and you need to find the exact way to spell that including whether it's capital letters or not and in that article it shows you how to find it once you know the name of your ASIO sound card and how it's listed in your Windows ASIO sound card list place that name in here instead of this one or use ASIO for all and after the quotation marks you can add a couple other things if you want I run everything at 48k so I'm gonna tell port audio to run jack at 48k by the dash small r 48,000 space I'm going to use 256 for the period buffer frames so dash small p 256 hit apply OK then you double click on that and it'll bring up something like this now I also have my priority set at 95 so I can get some real time so I can experiment with that parameter yours won't come that way so you can add dash P95 here if you want. I'd, I added mine just after the dash capital R, so dash capital P95 if you want to experiment using real-time priorities. Okay, once you've brought that up and activated, now you just need your connection bay. I like the KX Studio connection bays. You go to the, this site here, which will be in the show notes. All these links will be in the show notes. And then the Windows download, download Cadence. Carla, they'll be zipped, so unzip the files. Inside Cadence will be Katia. Just double click on Katia to bring it up, which is this one here. And then double click on Carla, the folder there, and that'll bring up this one here. Then you have to decide how to configure it. And again, I'm, on the engine part, I'm using ASIO so that I it'll show my MIDI port so my MIDI keyboard works also I like Carla because of these plugins okay so so what's this VB cable ASIO bridge 
this is an excellent application it just came out it's absolutely fantastic it allows any non ASIO aware application to send audio to the ASIO sound card in this instance to Jack Router so that we can hear any applications audio inside here and to our ASIO sound card and we can also send audio back to that ASIO bridge so that we can record from it which is where this video this video is attached to the inputs one and two so that you can hear me and anything that I play from Mix or Carla which includes my keyboard I'm also using Audacity and that hi-fi cable input is the virtual sound card that comes with the ASIO bridge once you've downloaded ASIO bridge it comes with its own virtual audio cable you have to remember to go into Windows audio properties for playback and recording go to the hi-fi cable and go to the advanced tab and make sure that it's the same sample rate as your ASIO sound card in my case that would be 48k so that's fairly self-explanatory and let's show you in as in this uh, audacity since we have it connected to the input a VB cable I have a drum kit as an example this does not have an ASIO sound card but it does it does allow you to choose the hi-fi cable input that's what you need to do in order to use the ASIO bridge. I've already done that so we'll go ahead and play it and the VU meters are popping up and what I've done is it's coming out so now you're not seeing an audacity because audacity is listening to inputs here but this non-ASIO application is going through that virtual sound card called the hi-fi cable and coming out of this bridge into my sound card but I want to take the output of the bridge send it to the input of the bridge where audacity is listening and also the video so you may not have heard the drum for a while but now you should hear it again and from Carla I also have my keyboard so we should be able to hear that too and record it so we'll set up just a little mini recording here and I'll show you why this is this is kind of neat we're using audacity which is open source and it's a fairly versatile program but it does not have an ASIO sound card so this ASIO bridge really makes a difference in making this more useful and now we should be able to hear it too. Okay, just a little bit of an example of how that works. So I'm able to use Audacity and an ASIO sound card with this VB ASIO bridge. It's fantastic. Okay, I think that pretty much sums up everything. How to get Jack Audio on your system, how to use the VB ASIO bridge to connect non-ASIO aware apps, and I'll use Audacity to record by taking the output to the input. So if anything you want to record goes to the input, and that includes that virtual sound card's output. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy Jack Audio on your Windows system. Thanks for watching.